on June 18, 2023, Titan, a submersible operated by Ocean Gate, went missing in international waters in the North Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. The submersible was on a tourist expedition to view the wreckage of the RMS Titanic, with five individuals on board, including the founder and CEO of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush, a British businessman, Hamish Harding, a Pakistani businessman, Shahzada Daud, and his teenage son, Suleiman, a French explorer, Paul Henry. Due to the estimated three days of oxygen supplied, there was a huge rescue effort by U.S. Coast Guard and Canada's Coast Guard, which was unsuccessful until early on June 22, when evidence of the wreckage of the vessel started to emerge. Three of that submersible that went down uh, with five passengers on Sunday. Leading to the tragic collision that the vessel imploded in the ocean depths and there were no survivors. So let's try to figure out what exactly happened and why it happened and what we can learn from this. If you didn't subscribe our channel yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We know about the company operating the Titan Submersible. Ocean Gate Incorporated is a privately held US company operating out of Everett, Washington that provides cured submersible for tourism, industry, and research and exploration. The company was founded in 2009 by Stockton Rush and Glamour Soul. Stockton Rush wanted to be an astronaut, so he got his commercial pilot license. Because of bad eyesight, he could never be a military pilot. So instead, he moved from San Francisco to settle to work at McDonnell Douglas as a flight test engineer for the F-15 Eagle. After attending the launch of Spaceship One in the Mojave Desert in 2004, he decided he didn't want to go up to space as a tourist. He wanted to be like a Captain Kirk on the Enterprise. He wanted to explore and piloted his pursuit to undersea exploration. He was married to Wendy Rush, a descendant of Isador and Ida Strauss, two people who actually passed away on the sinking of the Titanic, which ties into the story here today. The tragic events happened during a deep sea tourism expedition to explore the wreckage of the Titanic which sunk in the Northern Atlantic in 1912. Before against the specifics of this particular tragedy, let's put just how difficult deep sea exploration is into context. It's easy to be in of aviation and space exploration because breaking of free gravity and flying through the air seems like such a feat. But in many ways, deep sea craft are the much greater engineering challenges. It all comes down to pressure. We don't think about air pressure because it's sea level. It's just 14.7 pounds square inch. That pressure is the result of the column of air that reaches above us all the way into outer space. All those very molecules above us pushing down result in that pressure. But water is much more dense fluid than air. So for every 10 meters or 32.8 feet you dive, the pressure increases by 1 atmosphere or 14.7 psi. The Titanic is sitting on the ocean floor at about 13,000 feet below sea level. The two broken parts of the ship, the powerless turner, more than 2,600 feet apart and surrounded by debris. After over 100 years of being in the bottom of the ocean, the wreckage is 400 miles off the coast of the Newfoundland in Canada. Let's put this death into perspective. Imagine laying on your back with one by one foot board and how much weight would you feel on that board? At 100 meters, the size of a soccer or football field, we have the pressure of 10 atmosphere or 145 psi, which means on that one by one foot board, we would feel the weight of 20,880 pounds, that is 4.7 Tesla model wise. At 381 meters, 1250 feet, we have the height of Empire State Building in New York City. At this depth, we would feel 37.4 atmosphere of pressure, and that one by one foot board would feel the weight of 80,000 pounds. At 490 meters, we have the max dive depth of the C class of US Navy submarine. Here would feel 48.5 atmosphere of pressure, and that board would feel the weight of 94,800 pounds. At 828 meters, we have the height of the Burj Khalifa. It would feel 82 atmosphere of pressure, and that board would feel the weight of 173,520 pounds. Now this is the same depth as the deepest diving submarine and operation today the Oscar-class submarine in the Russian Navy at 38,000 meters. Since the wreckage of the Titanic, 
had a pressure of 376 atmosphere and that boat would feel the weight of 797,000 pounds. The Ocean Gate Titan was ready for a mass dive depth of about 4,000 meters. Now that might sound insane, but actually it's not. Even the record for the deepest human beings have been. The honor goes to James Cameron and deepest sea challenger built in Australia in 2012. Deep Sea Challenger reached the deepest part of the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean, the deepest point on Earth, at a mind-boggling 11,000 meters or 36,000 feet. Air would feel 1090 atmosphere of pressure, and that one by one foot board would have the weight of 2.3 million pounds on it. Compare that to the difference in pressure of an aeroplane at cruising altitude of 36,000 feet were outside. The pressure might be 3 psi on the inside between 10 and 12. And that hopefully puts the perspective why more people have been to space than have been into the deepest part of our oceans. Now let's talk about the red flags that plagued Ocean Gate from the get-go. By the way, Ocean Gate just sound like a walking scandal ready to happen. First, the design limitation of the Titan required that they have to be bolted down 17 to 18, both from outside. This means there is no way for the passengers inside to open the hatch. They had to rely on ground crews to open it. Now this is understandable. Because of these, deep sea vessels have to be incredibly tight. They have very strong water seas to hold water. And that's all complicated. But I think this shows you why it's really important to have backup systems and have some sort of explosive detonation cord you can pull to blow the hatch in event that the craft surfaced and no one found it. And that was actually one of the fears early on is that the vessel could actually surface and be at the surface somewhere along the Atlantic unfound and still die from suffocating because they couldn't open the hatch and air could run out. The Titan also didn't have GPS or other navigational instruments on board and it didn't have a locator beacon either like a black box on an aircraft. Most subs use GPS for near surface navigation, which doesn't work in deeper waters. In deeper waters, they use dead reckoning course information obtained by ship's gyro compass, measured speed and estimate of local ocean currents. They also allow inertial navigation systems, which is an estimated position source utilizing acceleration, deceleration, pitch and roll from the computers that transmit this data. The Titan in contrast appeared to rely only on data provided by surface support vessel. In 2019, OceanGate published a blog post explaining why the Titan was not certified by any ship authority, which was a huge red flag. OceanGate stated that the vast majority of marine and aviation accidents are actually a result of operator error, not mechanical failure and orbit that classification focused solely on the physical state of the vessel and not the corporate action which are characterized as a constant committed effort and a focused corporate culture of maintaining high-level operational safety. Journalist David Pogue, who wrote on the Titan to view the Titanic in 2022, noted during his expedition the surface sport vessel lost track of the Titan for about 4 to 5 hours and mentioned that adding a locator beacon was actually discussed during this event. They could still send short text to the sub, but they had no idea where it was. It was quiet and very tense, he says, and they shut off the ship's internet to keep us from tweeting, and they have already known that this could happen. The craft was also controlled by a video game controller, which sounds like some cool Silicon Valley way of thinking being back shares and break rooms, but it's downright stupid. Military spec products go through unbelievable rigorous testing, making them safe in all operating environments. For example, as expensive as Apple's Vision Pro headset is at $3,500, it is downright cheap compared to $400,000 that is cost to get a helmet for the F-35 fighter jet. And the reason why won't lower volumes, of course, but also because they have to go through unbelievable vibration testing, is to make sure the wells of all hold up, make sure that the higher levels of radiation at 40 to 50,000 feet won't do any damage long term, and make sure absolute reliability. Now let's talk about how we got to the Titan. Ocean Gate started by purchasing bodies, which is a submersible back in 2012 which was their first test bed for testing and learning about this endeavor. Next, they built Cyclops 1, which is in collaboration with the University of Washington's Applied Physics Laboratory. And this was a deeper sea vessel capable of reaching max depth of 500 meters. Still nowhere near deep enough for the Titanic, but this was their next step and their next iteration in the early design. 
The hull was made of carbon fiber and the whole submersible would have dived vertically with pivoting feet to ensure that the passenger remained up. Right now it was said that Boeing worked with Ocean Gate and the University of Washington on their initial design analysis. Before get back to that in a second, cause there is a little bit more in that story. Finally, they would arrive at the Titan, their final product that would actually be rated for 4,000 meters. One of the key takeaways about the Titan is that this is carbon fiber and titanium hull submersible. Now, this is really exotic in the world of materials. We have been using high strength steel, aluminum for a long time. We have data engineering data on how they fail and what to look for and test methodologies. But carbon fiber is still quite exotic. In fact, any car you have ever driven probably doesn't have much carbon fiber in it. The only exceptions are really, really high end supercars, or even in the case of aviation, more recently with the Boeing Dreamliner. Ocean Gate signed a contract with Spencer Composites in January 2017 for the carbon composite cylinder. This is the same company that built the composite pressure hull for the single person deep fried challenger. First, Steve Foster, after Foster passed away, Deep Light Challenger was acquired by Richard Branson's Virgin Oceanic, which had announced plans to conduct a series of five dives to deepest points of the ocean, but Deep Fried refused to indulge. The plan is a craft had been designed to dive only once. This is important to go back to this in a second. In a statement, they said the problem is that strength of Deep Light Challenger does decrease after each dive. It's strongest on the first dive, said Adam Wright, the firm's president. It was designed to set the record dive to the deep and then to be retired as an exhibit in the Smithsonian. This is a really crucial part because sometimes it ends during when it comes down to its operational lifetime and understanding it. So after the disappearance of the Titan 2023, the University of Washington stated that the Applied Physics Laboratory had no involvement in design, engineering, or testing for the Titan submersible. A Boeing spokesperson also said that Boeing was not a partner on the Titan and did not design or build it. And NASA spokesperson said that NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center had a space act agreement with the Ocean Gate but did not conduct testing or manufacturing via its workforce or facilities. Basically, all of these partnerships they had are now being revealed that they were not really partnerships. This is classic example of a company trying to get credibility by partnering with NASA. How good does that sound? But what exactly they did with NASA isn't really well understood. David Lockridge, the Ocean Gate Director of Marine Operations, filed a quality control report in January 2018, stating that no non-destructive testing or NDI of the carbon fiber hull had taken place to check for voids or delaminations. In the carbon fiber layup that could compromise the hull strength, NDI, non-destructive investigation and NDT, non-destructive testing is a way of checking something to make sure that it's safe without actually breaking apart. The world of carbon fiber is much more difficult because carbon fiber doesn't bend or yield or get grooves and cracks the way other materials do. It requires a lot of information and inside Lockridge was told that Ocean Gate would rely on the real-time acoustic monitoring system. He was summoned to a meeting in which he was told that the acrylic window that you look out of was only rated for 1300 meters because Ocean Gate would not fund the design of a window rated for 4000 meters. In that meeting, he reiterated his concerns and added he would refuse to allow crude testing without a whole scan. Lockridge was dismissed from his position as a result. Ocean Gate filed a lawsuit against him. The suit was settled in November 2018. In December 10, 2018, Stockner Rush used the vertical thruster to overcome unexpected positive buoyancy when descending past 10,000 feet. These immersives are like a balloon with air inside. So it's hard for them to dive and so they have different phase and balance systems to be able to accomplish that. But for every around 10,000 feet, they had to use vertical thruster to continue his descent. And when this happened, it caused interference with the communication systems between spinning propellers, the disturbance in the wake of water spinning off those propellers and everything else. Now they lost contact for one hour. Rush was thrilled to call himself the second person to solo dive to 13,000 feet after James Cameron. After these tests were completed in January 2020, the hull of the Titan began showing sign of the cyclic fatigue and the craft was de-rated to 3,000 meters. Now the hull was repaired and again rated for 4,000 meters of diving depth. We are at the precipice of new age of exotic tourism and exploration. Between going to the space, to go to the moon, low earth orbit or deep sea diving, we are at the edge of seeing more of like these wealthier people. If you are going to do this, 
it's important to realize just how unsafe this can be. Unlike commercial aviation, there are no regulatory boards involved here. This is international water. The company did have to register the parent vessel that takes people from Canada. But what happens out in open waters is not very highly regulated. Our aviation is a perfect example. If you ever hoop on an aeroplane, you cannot imagine how safe you are because of all people involved from company members like Boeing and Airbus, personal engineering test officials all the way to the FAA and other regulatory approval bodies that make sure every little thing is regulated and controlled. There is none of that going on here. One of the first things to realize about employing of the vessel is that there was probably not a lot of suffering. The people probably just died instantly. We mentioned that how much weight you would feel at this depth and you would pretty much just got crushed. They built a vessel that was itself pretty impressive. These are things that human beings could never do before. But the problem is every craft, every vessel, every engineering device has an operational lifetime. The way engineers do this by testing something and figuring out how many cycles can we hit with this before problems start to emerge and then they add a safety factor. For example, aircraft are pressurized and depressurized, again pressurized and depressurized, and then overhauled with tear down the wall panels and inspect and well actually get out a check for any cracks and other impurities and imperfections because any crack or any little dent can be stress concentration point where it will start to impound and fail. Then the aircraft is retired and that is the operational window. Old aircraft could probably fly for thousand more fights after that but we don't wanna do that. That is the operational lifetime. What was the operational lifetime of the Titan without ever established? They were not doing NDIs or NDT, non-destructive testing to see what was happening to the carbon fiber. Again, the Titan just had some sort of crumble or some defect or deformation. Something was happening over a couple of cycles. I mean they did successfully go down and come back three or three times and on fourth time they crumbled. Another opinion is that Stockner's was trying to make these tickets affordable. They started at $125,000, double that by the time of these guys went on at $2,050 sounds like ton of money. The real price of this probably should have been $1.5 million that allows you to replace the vessel every so often. We have to always learn from our mistakes. So those are the things that we can try to improve. And maybe the next time somebody comes up with this idea to deep ocean exploration, there is better methodology in place. And I would imagine that it's gonna be much more expensive. All right, that is a look on Titan's red flag and the reason of this tragedy that was neglected by Ocean Gate. If you thought this story was crazy, Hit the like, subscribe and share button.